welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. Well, today I want to talk to you about something I think uh, we all realize uh, is very important to uh, our coaching career, and that is practicing. Uh, there's only one way we can uh, have some have the control over the situation and be teaching in a way that players learn other than through practice. That's how we do it. And how we look on the floor is determined by how we looked in practice. Uh, I, I, I want to introduce it by just saying this. There's a certain attitude that you and your players have to have uh, towards uh, practicing. Uh, I, I, I personally have a great feeling for practice. I love practicing. I, I really do. I love watching practices. I don't know how many I've watched in my career, but it has to be in the thousands. Uh, I've gone to NBA, to high school, to international. Uh, I've, I've seen just an enormous amount of practices and I've learned from them that the one thing I think that is important is your attitude towards it. Do you like it? Uh, is it really drudgery for you? Uh, if it is, then this is not the field for you. Uh, is it something that you are willing to spend the time on to make the best practice every day uh, possible. Uh, you, you can do that. Let me give you a story to kind of emphasize attitude towards practice. Uh, the man that I'm going to talk to you about, you probably have never heard uh, of this guy. His name is Pablo Casals. He's a cello player. That ought, to, that ought to end it right there, but uh, Casals was a, an, an outstanding a cello player and a musician. In fact, uh, in some time during the 20th century, he was voted the greatest musician uh, in the, of the 20th century. That's the kind of uh, player he was and a conductor. He also conducted to the same type of, of ex expertise. Uh, well, when he was a young boy, his father was a, a teacher, a piano teacher, but uh, Casals turned towards the cello. And the father said, you know, uh, if you're going to really be good at this, you've got to practice three hours every day, and you can't fail. That's what you have to do. So Pablo went out and practiced three hours every day when he was a young man, and then when he was in his 30s, he practiced three hours a day, and then when he was in his 50s, he practiced three hours every day. Uh, and along with that, when he got up in the morning, the very first thing he did, before anything, brushed his teeth or ate breakfast or anything, sat down at a piano and played Bach, which to uh, classical musicians, Bach is a highlight. Uh, he was a composer a long time ago, but his music uh, still resonates today, uh, even though that was two or three hundred years ago uh, when he wrote uh, most of this uh, music. And so uh, Casals practiced that right away in the morning. He got ready for the day uh, to be in the practice uh, mode. Well, he got into his 90s, and he was still practicing three hours a day. And his colleagues and his friends came to him. He was 94 years old, 94, 95, I can't remember quite uh, for sure. Uh, and they said to him, well, why are you practicing three hours a day? You're the best in the world. No one can compete with you. Why do you continue to practice three hours a day? You're in your 90s. And he looked at him and he said, well, I'm beginning to see some improvement. 
that's the kind of attitude you have to take towards practice. He just, he was going to practice, you know, even in his uh, 90s. Uh, that attitude is what I'm talking about. An attitude of this is something that will make me better. If I can improve just a little, uh, it's worth it. So, uh, uh, so you go after it and you do it through practice and as a coach you do it through your players at practice, practices. In all the, coach, in all the practices I've watched, I have to admit that very few of them have that attitude. There's good practices, there's great practices, there's average practices. Uh, but when you get into the really good practices, uh, they're run by men or women that have a love for what they're doing. Uh, their attitude is one, this is not work. Uh, this is what we do, and I love doing it. And when you can get that feeling, practice change. Well, with the practices I've seen uh, aren't, aren't, down, aren't like that. It's, it is drudgery, I can tell to the coach. Uh, he's just getting through it, is all he's doing. Uh, and uh, so I want to point these things out to you. Uh, I, I want to settle on five things today that I'd like to point out to you uh, about practicing. Uh, they're very simple of things. Uh, first of all, attention. I don't like to see coaches that don't pay attention to practicing. They should, their whole focus should be on what's happening on that practice floor. But many of them are talking to, it's just, I've even seen some that uh, answer their phone and just let the practice keep going. I don't like to come in uh, when I was in China, that's what I did. I, I coached and worked with uh, coaches and the players. Uh, but one day I walked into a, a practice. I, I used to go to them uh, regularly so I could help them if I saw something. And I walked in and I was stunned. There was the coach sitting on the table yelling out at the players. Now I've seen other practices like that. Uh, it, I didn't say anything to him right away, but afterwards I told him, no, you never sit on a table. You get involved with your players. Uh, you get involved in what they're doing and what you're doing. Pay attention uh, in your practices. Don't be dreaming of something. Don't be looking around. Keep your focus completely on what you're doing. And you will find that the players respond to that. If they know you're attentive, they will be attentive. But if they don't think you're attentive, then you're going to see some really bad practices. Uh, and uh, it's no, no reason for that. I, I think that you should keep practices simple. Very simple. Uh, and I have a reason for this. Players learn better doing simple things. We, we complicate things a lot with our voice. We talk too much. Uh, we add things that are ne uh, not necessary uh, and, and, and detract from what we're really trying to get done in that. Uh, that particular dr drill or uh, teamwork or whatever. Uh, I'm opposed to two ball drills. Uh, I just don't do them uh, and I won't let anybody do them uh, with our players. Uh, one ball is enough. Uh, you don't need to, this isn't about getting up a lot of shots. It's about learning cuts. It's about learning screens. It's about learning uh, overplay. It's, those are the things that you're doing. Uh, and so 
you know, keep, keep uh, things very simple and don't add things on the spur of the moment. Stay with what you're doing. Make it simple and the players will learn it quicker and they will retain it longer uh, and be able to use it uh, in games. Preparation, the third thing, prepare for your practices. Uh, you will find if you're well prepared for practice, uh, a lot of the problems that come up in practice just won't be there. Uh, the players understand it, they know it. No matter, some of them, of course, you know, might be uh, a little off key, a, a little, but uh, for the most part, they respond to, to a well prepared practice. Uh, whether you're an NBA player or a, or a high school player, uh, they know, uh, they understand. Uh, what is a good practice and so prepare well uh, and that means taking the time to prepare. I, I for, personally I could never go out to a practice I hadn't spent at least two hours on preparation going over and over again so that I knew the points that I was necessary to get in on each thing uh, that uh, we were doing. And this fourth thing is repetition. There is no way you can get good at any skill without constant repetition in your practice. Uh, practicing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, that is what builds skill. It builds the highest level of skill. Whatever skill you're looking at, shooting, basketball, passing, defending. D defending, by the way, is not practiced enough, not near enough in some instances, uh, because most coaches don't like coaching practice defense. Uh, you have to get over that because, to tell you the truth, uh, that's an important part of your, your success, is having a, str a strong and adequate defensive uh, team. I just mentioned that as far as repetition is concerned because uh, I, I, I feel a lot of times that when they get to defense, there's a different attitude. But it's because of the coach, coach's attitude. When, I, when you are really into it, the players know, and you uh, will know. I have one thing I've said, I don't know, hundreds of times. I've never had a bad practice, and I don't know how many practices I've run. It has to be, I, I, I don't even know if, you, if there, I could count them. Uh, I've had very few bad practices when I am prepared to practice. But there have been times when my mind just got a little foggy, when I wasn't quite ready. I, I stopped a little bit short on my preparation. And in the practice itself, I maybe had a problem uh, that was eating away at me or something, uh, you have to get pretty good at getting rid of that kind of a, a feeling. Uh, but I have bad practices, but they've always been when I haven't been ready. Uh, they, they blame it on the players. I remember in China walking off the floor one day, we were preparing for the big tournament, and uh, one of my assistants was a lady a very, very good coach and a great lady. Uh, we were walk, walk, uh, you know, walking off the floor and she said to me, how did you feel about that practice, coach? And I said, I was not very good, was I? And she said, well, the players are just not in, in the right mood. We should have ran them. That's the way they talked in, in uh, China. They just run them to death if they, if they uh, uh, didn't practice well. But I knew. 
I know in my heart, I just came not ready. Get away from that. Over the years, if you consistently try to be right about that, you'll find that you're just right most of the time. And your practices will be the kind of practices you want. The last thing, the fifth thing, and this has to do with simplicity too, is everything you do in your practice should relate to what your system is. Uh, you don't practice drills that have no relation at all to what you do as a team. Uh, it, it's just a waste of time. By the way, Casals also was a very good uh, uh, talker. He said this about, uh, about this type of practicing, because practicing to musicians is equally important as it is to basketball uh, players. He said, do only what is necessary. Those three words, do only what is necessary for, I guess, I'm sorry. Uh, and if you do that, you cut down the fluff of a practice. You, you take out the unnecessary, uh, which is a lot of things. Uh, I, I, I can't urge you enough uh, to uh, heed this saying. Uh, do only what is necessary and do practice only what is essential to what you do as a team. Disregard everything else. Uh, and uh, I know it's like, you know, you, you hate to throw things away. Uh, old pair of shoes or whatever, uh, even though you know you'll never use them anymore. It's the same thing is true of what you're doing in practice. Um, you know, one of the things, I'll just give you an example. Uh, one of the things I see so often, almost every practice, is uh, three on two, two on one. And uh, I, I just can't understand why you're practicing that. I'll count up sometimes uh, how many three on twos, two on ones you get in a game. You won't need to be very, uh, you won't need a calculator. Uh, you can do it on one hand, keeping track. You very seldom get a three on two. You very seldom get a two on one. And when you do get a three on two or a two on one, the players will know what to do. The players will know what to do. But you don't need to practice that. Practice a fast break as a team. That's a different thing. Or taking a particular skill, out like passing, which I think is the most important part of running a fast break. Uh, and then working together as five, five players, not just three guys or two guys, because that is the way it happens in a game. Uh, it's uh, unnecessary. It's not what, what uh, will help you. Uh, I'm good. I just want to add this. that uh, Through Basketball Talk Pro, if you want to go look at uh, our videos, uh, we're we're somewhere, we're probably edging up towards 500 coaching videos that we've made. You will see a progression where we hit most of the things over and over again. Today I'm talking to you about practice. Uh, I will talk to you many times over the next uh, year or years, or yeah, for me it's been since 2013. Uh, we come back to it in a different way. Uh, a different, I mean, we may just narrow into one part, preparation, for example, or simplicity, or attention. Uh, but we will come back to what we're talking about today many, many times. So uh, what we miss today will be picked up somewhere along the line, or has already been picked up. Uh, go ahead and look at the videos. I think they'll help you see. That's it for today. Thanks for watching uh, and I look forward. I'm getting to look forward to talking to you guys just like I look forward to practice. So I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to the next time we meet. Thank you.